Hey there, and welcome to the daily podcast where wisdom smacks us with kisses or love taps. I'm Michelle Spiva, a wisdom strengthening coach, your host, and practical priestess of wisdom. Join us daily to gain wisdom and mental strength as we tackle innovative thinking, address emotional and behavioral life traps, and yes, provide you with some practical how-tos to wrap it all up. So settle in or crank up the speed 2x, whatever gets your mental processes firing as we dive in. Stay tuned. Hey there, this is Michelle Spivey, your Practical Priestess of Wisdom with today's podcast of Wisdom Smack. I am going on and doing this one. I heard, oh my gosh, (laughs) I don't know what was in the water yesterday, but I got a lot of responses. Uh, Some from people, you know, telling me thank you. But for those dear, lovely babies out there who reached out to me on different social medias to ask me how they could go about being more savvy and wise in understanding all the machinations that are going on. And even one made reference to how the protests and things are being manipulated and and co-opted for nefarious means by peoples and places and, and, um, social orders that mean you no good, today is for you. I decided to crack open a series that I've been working on in my wisdom school where I'm talking about the subtlety arts and learning how to see them. So today I'm going to be doing a training on uh, what I call done to you instead of done for you. How to see what is done to you instead of done for you. So join me on the flip as I break it down. It's a lot to cover. You might have to listen to this one a few times, but I truly hope it helps you. All right, beloved, I will see you on the flip. And thank you for reaching out. Love you. All right. Hey there. Let's go on and get started. I got a lot to talk to you guys about today. So today I'm actually um, going to be sharing a snippet of some training that I've been working on in uh, my wisdom school on the subtlety arts. And so I'm going to be talking to you guys today about done to you instead of done for you. And I'm going to go on and say that this is one of the biggest cons around and it is perpetrated on the everyday person. Even those people who you think have power are being duped and conned by this. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to say is, is that you have to stop being out strategized. Whether you want to believe it or not, there are a lot of constructs social mores and norms and games that people have played and set up to be that games. And the sad part is, is if you don't recognize it, then there's a problem. I talked a little bit uh, in previous podcasts about the difference between players and pawns is that players are aware there's a game, whereas pawns are the sacrificial lambs to be collateral damage and expendable. And they have no clue if they're playing a game, but they're real good at following the rules. And so I want you to stop being a pawn in this game and move up into a player. Whether you want to or not, you need to be aware of it. So stop being out strategized. First and foremost, look at and let me let me let me give you a why. And the reason why you want to stop being out strategized is because you and me Um, When we're unaware, because I'm determined to to be aware and stay aware. When you're unaware, you unknowingly believe that a lot of things that are presented as a gift to you or as a, a boon or a help even is not. It is something that is being enacted on you to get you to uh, move in a certain way that is basically a puppet master. Uh, artfully at his or her or their work. So when I talk about stop being uh, out strategized, I want to cover, you need to look at power dynamics. You need to look at uh, length of time for for game uh, achievements. You need to look at uh, strategies and becoming an excellent tactician. 
You need to evaluate the levels and types of relationships that you're having. And you need to learn how to work outside of these game mechanics and constructs. Okay, so let me go through these because we're going to be talking fast because I not only have stop being uh, out strategize, I'm going to talk to you about knowing your enemy. I'm going to talk to you about uh, learning how manipulation works in this construct. We're going to be talking a little bit about villainry mm -hmm. and we got to do all this in about 20 something minutes. So let me shut up and get to going. So stop being out strategize. First thing I want to say is look at your power dynamics. One of the things that you have to do, even if you think they're your friends and they've been around for years, look at the power dynamics. How uh, does the power flow and to where? And then does it always flow from you to them or does it flow evenly back and forth? Or what if it's not a one-on-one -on -one relationship or a group? What if it's a society or um, an entity or um, a company that you happen to be working in? Check the power dynamics. Who holds the power? I've talked many times on these different podcasts about the different types of power. I've talked about corporate power. Oh, yes, I have. I've talked about coercive, which is the one that most people think of when you talk about these powers, but is the one that is used the least. And that's what we would call coercive, which is punishment. You know, don't do this. You get fired. Don't act the way we want you to. Then you get uh, ostracized. But that's one of the smallest ones. There is networking power that you get by who you know. There are so many others and, and oh, I can't, I just, I really wish I could go into those right now to down to that granular level, but I got a lot to cover. So we're going to have to move on. And the next thing about power dynamics is not only looking at how the power flows and to where, looking at following the money. No matter what, there, whether you want to believe it or not, there is going to come down. And when I say money, I'm talking about currency. Uh, I'm talking about the tool of trust that people exchange and use. What I need you to understand is that money is simply a categorical construct that societies have agreed on to be able to trust each other in transactions. You see, it doesn't matter what color, what creed, uh, what background, what, what, what country you come from. If you have a currency, and we call it money, if you have a currency and you need something from this person or these people, the trust is not in you. It's in the money. So when you want to look at the power dynamics, follow the money. Who is giving the money and who is receiving the money. Joe Dalio, Dalio uh, has an entire series on YouTube, 30 minutes each, eight sectors, talking about the principles of success. And he has a, a great one that talks about um, money. And uh, he, to me, it's just old review. But uh, if you're not familiar with how economies work, and I said money, but he talks about economies, check it out uh, and Google it. I'm not going to put the links in here today because I'm not feeling it, but Google it and you'll see how he talks about when someone pays money, they take, they, they lose something, but someone else gains something, meaning that they gain their livelihood where another person uh, so not suffers, but but loses a bit of their livelihood. But I like the way he says it, so go check that out if you'd like. And understanding where your power is flowing and going and to whom, and if it's even circulating, that should give you a wake-up call. Following the money. Are you the one always giving the money but never receiving it back? Or are you the one that's always giving the money with a promise that you'll receive it back in boons to your area and you never do? If you start to notice that you pay taxes just like everybody else, but your community never gets all the stuff that other communities get, you're going to start to learn that you're being out strategized because the power dynamics are off. Wake up, my love. The next one is when we talk about the timing, most people don't understand that D done to you instead of done for you is another way of saying we're playing a long game on you where we're going to do, it's not a bait and switch, it's a le loss leader. But except for it not being where you go into a store, it's where you go in for your life, where they give you a little something on the front end and get you used to getting the little bits of boons that they give you because they know on the long back of the end, they're going to get you for years. 
They're going to they're going to get you to sacrifice and give and do stuff in the name of because they are they are um uh programming you to be able uh to to get you to follow them and do whatever it is that they need. I heard a great saying one time, and this is not just for the the masses. This is for the people who really think they're in power too. So check yourself. I heard something that was really powerful by, uh, oh my God, I didn't write her name down. Uh, But she made a point. And what she said was, when talking about economies, she said, what the powerful realized a long time ago was that the average person in a democracy, a capitalist run society doesn't necessarily need to be wealthy. They just need to feel like they're wealthy. And once you they learned how to do this, they have no problems with giving certain boons at certain times to keep you in line because they're playing the long game. So when you start learning to figure out what is the long game and stop falling for these current battles, for these current wars, thinking you've won something, you will start to develop your strategies differently. You'll learn how to have self-denial because you will clearly start to see the code and what's happening. The next one under uh, stop being out-strategized is to learn strategy. Yes, start to know the ways of your enemy so that you can make them reap what they sow. Learn strategy, but not only learn strategy, meaning that you have a a goal and it doesn't necessarily have to be clever. It can be something as simple as I will have freedom, autonomy, happiness and these types of things. And I will, um, you know, be self-reliant or um, I, I, I will only have interactions with people where I can have meaningful relationships for a transformative relationship from here on. But not only do you need to have a clear cut strategy, the bigger deal is you must become an excellent tactician. And what an excellent tactician does is they are able to plan out the specifics to achieve the strategy in a clever enough way so that it won't be uh, quickly understood by those who would try to stop you. When I'm uh, writing books and things and I have to figure out how to pull off something that's going to be entertaining and engaging, I have to put on my tactician hat to figure out the choices of the of the way the actions are going to go that are clever, that are insightful and that are entertaining and not just, oh, well, we'll do this because whenever you plan and whenever you set up a, a plan, things are going to happen. And so learning how to be an excellent tactician to learn how to pull off a better strategy means that you understand contingency plans. You understand that it's not if, but when the plan that you've proposed doesn't work, having alternative. The average person picks one strategy and the most straightforward um, tactics as possible and then crumbles when there is some adversity when there are obstacles or that when life just happens and you don't get what it is you want to get. So let me hurry up because my time is getting away from me. So this is the next thing I want to say about uh, stop being over stra- out strategized. You need to uh, out- evaluate the level and types of relationships. And I've put some here. I can't go through all of them, but I want you to marinate on them. But this is a big one. And this is one that I have found that I have been duped by the most. That's why it's listed first. And that is uh, having a transactional relationship instead of a transformative one, only to realize that when I could no longer do or I could no longer provide uh, the expectations of exchange between the person, they they no longer wanted to be my friend. Instead of me thinking that is a transformative one, that It's not an exchange quid pro quo. quo. It's not what I can do for you. It's because when we uh, interact, we get better together. But uh, you get it. okay? so evaluate the levels of your relationship. So, you know, you got the transactional versus the transformative. What about this one? Too many times I have had to correct people who thought that we were friends. And I'm like, no. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I have different levels and I'd like to articulate that. And you can get demoted just like I can. I tell people all the time, my privilege, I mean, my, my presence in your life 
outside, if, if we're not, if you're not my client, my, pri- my presence in your life is a privilege and not a right. And guess what? So is yours. So I don't take you for granted and thinking it's your, that it's my right to demand of you what um, you think. And I don't want that from you. So confusing acquaintances with associates and especially um, uh, uh, confusing acquaintances, associates with colleagues. I've had to ask some people who wanted to uh, position themselves as a friend and they were nothing more than a glorified con- client because all of the energy was from me uh, doing work when I had to talk to them. And I was like, no, either you're my friend or you're my client. And then I had to change that to y- you are an associate or you are a client, uh, you know, because now you have to get to the point where you're very discerning about what kinds of relationships you have with that one. So here are some others. Are you a friend or are you just a resource? Mm -hmm. Ask yourself that one. That's kind of like the transactional versus the transformative. But that's for real. You'll have people that befriend you because of what you can do. And they want to be close to that resource. So they're not your friends. They're just a person who wants to use you as a resource. Or what about this one? A mentor or a manipulator. Okay. What about this one? A leader or a tyrant or dictator. You have to be willing to evaluate the level and types of relationships that you're engaged with and those which are unhealthful and, and, and cause you to lose a little bit of yourself or you die a little bit of yourself daily that you shouldn't be dying to, they need to go. No matter how hard it hurts, they need to go. And the only way they get to come back is if they have truly had a transformational, hopefully transcendent, realization that I am not the one and we are not the two. So you got to hit the bo- the road, boo. You just cannot. We, can, we cannot be, okay? When you take a change, when you take a stand, you start to gain a better way of understanding strategy. The next one is uh, to not be out strategized. Stop only working with their known or taught construct. Give yourself permission to break the mold and step out of what they have said uh, you have to do or you are or in ways you have to act. Who says you have to be uh, you have to keep operating it based on their rules, their world and their society. So be willing to do that. If it's no longer working for you and yours, break the mold. But be prepared to self-sustain and to uh, self-support yourself. If you if, if that means you have to leave what they are um, offering. OK, so. The next thing I want to uh, want to talk about, so we've covered stop being out strategized. I now want to talk about knowing the ways of your enemy to make them reap what they sow. And this is um, this is how a, a level of how they start working on you to get you think they're doing stuff for you when instead they're doing stuff to you. That is, first they start with the deception, then the manipulation, then the status subjugation. Then the ego annihilation. So let's break those down. So the first one is, is they start with deception. They either gaslight you or present illusions or both. It is all about presenting to you what they know you expect, whether it's the truth or not. Nine times out of 10, it is not. And then making you question when you see behind the facade. Is this really the real so they keep you in a constant state of flux where you don't know what to what to believe. And so you're forced to just achieve uh, your own level of, of sanity just to, to make it through the day. You know, that's kind of like, you know, them peeing on your leg and telling you it's raining. So they start with a deception. And the reason why they start with the deception, because it's easier to manipulate you when you are depleted. So with manipulation, this is where they start to make you do things that you wouldn't do if left to your own devices. They start giving you uh, silent and covert contracts. We'll talk a little bit about that if we got enough time today. And so when they start to manipulate you, they start to get you to the point where they remove your personal agency, which is called subject uh, subjugation. That means they strip you of your personal power, your own status and character. They cause you to become almost an automaton to get in line and do what they want you to do 
or for fear, you will be kicked out of society, shunned and all of that. The next thing is, is the ego annihilation. This is where they go after your soul and they start to strip you of your personal identity, your personal power, and even your confidence. And so these are the levels that they work with so that everything they do to you, you think, oh, they're doing this for me. Oh, yes, they're doing this for me. So we've talked about stop being out strategized where I want you to look at your power dynamics. How long is the game? Don't just settle for these current battles. We've talked about learn how to have a better strategy, but also becoming an excellent tactician. We've learned how to evaluate the levels and the types of relationships. We've realized that you don't have to work only in their construct. Get out of it. But then we also looked at knowing the ways of your enemy and the process that they take. First, they try to deceive you, then manipulate you. Then they try to go for your soul by lowering your status, stripping you of your personal power and character. And then they uh, twist the butter knife in the wound with the ego annihilation of stripping you of your self-identity, power and confidence. So now. Let's start to bring this on home because I want to make sure that I'm covering uh, the rest of this so that you get some ideas on what's really going on and how to start identifying them in your life specifically. So first, learn and figure out who's manipulating you. Figure it out. And and I can't tell you all the different situations, but nine times out of 10, start looking at if you feel in any kind of way gaslit. Like, is it me? If you're asking yourself certain things about relationships, situations, or events, if you figure, if you find yourself saying, is it me or, yeah, that's probably gaslighting. You need to look and see who's manipulating you by using the things we've already talked about, about, you know, looking at the power dynamics, seeing if that, that model of deception, manipulation, status, subjugation, and ego annihilation is happening. All right. So once you do that, then I want you to start looking at how much information, your information is required. Because if every time you look, someone is collecting information and data on you, and I'm not just talking about your facts, I'm talking about even your whys. If people are able to track you and they're able to learn um, your habits by observing you, they have an advantage. There's this whole thing called the observer's advantage, where because you're not that subject, you can observe them and get more more objective information about them, their habits, their beliefs and things by observation. So if you find that you're you're always being tracked uh, and and uh, a lot of different information is being gathered whether it be through questions uh through queries inquiries through uh things that need to be met before you can have access to them yeah they're collecting information on you if you're not doing the same y'all don't have an uh an equitable relationship and interaction Because someone is always collecting data to either use it for you, to you, or against you. So be mindful of that. And so the next thing is, is I want you to start becoming mindful of the different subtle ways that villains move around us. I found this uh, tweet the other day uh, uh, on uh, Orange Book's uh, Twitter. And Orange Book had five things that they listed on how to assess someone's character. And so I'm going to quickly go through them right now. And you'll probably need to listen to this podcast again because I'm throwing a lot of stuff at y'all. Okay. So they gave five things, five ways to assess someone's character. Now, some of this, I don't know if you'll be able to do it if you don't live with them. But hey, I'll, I'll, I'll make note of that. So number one, listen to what they don't talk about. That's just like listening to the questions they, uh, excuse me, that's just like uh, listening for the gaps of what uh, is said louder than the words that are spoken. Number two is pay attention to the questions they ask. And I'm going to say, and don't ask. If there are certain things that you know someone, if they're having a certain level of relationship with you, should be asking about you. Or when you ask it about them, they shy about it and everything. You need to pay attention to that. Number three is the one that I'm talking about. It says, look for how they treat those who can do nothing uh, for them. And I want to change this to say, look at how they treat those who cannot increase their status and their power. Okay, because. I, <laughs> this, and I'm laughing because it's, it's, it's so cruel 
And the sad part is, is it's cruel to the people who are he- who are doing it and don't realize that they've been taught to do this cr- this cruelness. I have seen where people are now. It's so obvious, but they can't see it. If they don't see you in their future, or if they don't see that you matter in the future, they don't even treat you with the common courtesy of being a human. And so when you look at how they treat people who can do nothing for them, be mindful if whether they're only jockeying for the people who can uh, up their status or be mindful of the of the way they look at people as cast offs, because there are a lot of people out here that are looking at other humans and not seeing them as having any kind of future value. And that is depressing and sad. Number four, they talk about look at how they talk to their parents. That was self-explanatory. Outside of if there is a real trauma that happened and you can see this person is trying to work through that trauma, all the other stuff lends towards entitlement and um, a self-centeredness that borders on the maniacal and the, when I say maniacal, the ego-driven maniacal. Run from that person. The next one is, the fifth one is, look at how they actually spend their days. Now, this is the one that you may not be able to know because you don't live with them. So, but what you can do is what my grandmother said, and that is look at their tendencies. Oh my good God, today. Yes, if you don't live with that person, but you know what they tend to do, you know them. And if what they tend to do is not be there for you, when y'all have something or you are in need, if they tend to give you lectures on stuff and always try to hold it over your head to pull status rank on you, look at these things. Now, I uh, I pulled this out. It was, it, it, Leah Michelle has been calling the carpet for some bad behaviors that she did when she was on Glee. And I pulled this out because this made so much sense in, in light of, where we are today. And she says, I apologize. And uh, now I'm more mindful of, uh, and I will be more mindful of any privileged position and perspective I may have had. And I'm like, may have had, helpful, for please. But I digress because it could have been the way they typed it out because they didn't put it in quotes. But what I do want to say is this. A lot of times, I don't want to say that people are knowingly Uh, doing things to you instead of for you. But what I will say is if you want to figure that out, check to see if they are operating from a privileged position where they have never been told no, where they've never had to go through the hoops and the obstacles that you've had to go through, where they've never had to know and understand how to code switch to understand others outside of themselves. That's a dead giveaway. Because their perspective is not only skewed, but it's limited. It's like looking through a pinhole and believing that's the entire world. So check that. So in my last few minutes, I'm going to be running through this, but I want to make sure that I get this today because I usually teach this in my classes that I teach people how to write. But it is apropos for uh, understanding these subtle things that people do in our world. So we're going to be talking about villainry. Mm -hmm. So first I'm going to talk about the types and then I'm going to talk about the levels and we're going to do this real fast because we only got a few minutes, okay? So there are different types of villains that hide in plain sight, okay? You've got the handsome and the charming. You've got them helpful ones. You have the ones that feign and pretend like they're an incompetent fool. You have the ones that always try to assure you that they're harmless. You have the ones that are highly likable. You have the ones that are secretly over in the corner plotting your demise. You have the ones that are passive aggressive. I can't stand them. If I ever figure out that you're passive aggressive, we can't be friends. We can't even be in the same room because passive aggressives, they'll look at you as fast as they. uh, Anyway, I, I, I digress. I don't have time to go off on passive aggressive like I'd like to. But then you have the ones that are have this jealous gaslightingness to them where they, their je- jealousy is driving them. But all the while they're trying to gaslight you like, no, that's that's I'm not jealous. No, no, you're jealous. No, I'm not jealous. That kind of thing. So we got the types real quick again. Uh, you've got your handsome or charming ones, the helpful ones, the incompetent fools, the harmless ones. The, and when I say harmless, they pretend to be harmless, not that they're not harmless. Um, The ones that are highly likable, the ones that are secretly plotting your demise, meaning these folks, you don't even know them, but they hate you and they are out to get you. 
Then you got the passive aggressives and the jealous, jealous gaslighters. So then there are levels to this villainry that you need to be aware of. And you need to be aware of this so that you can evaluate who you're dealing with and how serious to take this. So the first ones you have are the pawns. And the pawns are expendable. They're usually going to be those that usually deal with jealousy and they don't like you. And they're, they, you know, they they can't do too much to you. But then you've got the henchmen and henchwomen. And these are the ones that have strong arm tactics, tortures. They are the ones, they're going to be middle management who are just powerful enough to keep you from getting a raise. They're going to be the ones who, t- uh, the, uh, the, the, the white detractors, because I'm not going to call nobody supremacist because nobody is supreme over anybody else. But the ones that get out there with their little guns and wave them around at people to try to scare them and uh, try to exert that coercive power over them. And so you have to be a little more mindful of them. But then you have some that are nemesis. And what the nemesis are, they are the ones that it might not be where they're even trying to be mean to you, but they are are equally matched to to your abilities, but they stand for something else. And so neither of y'all can win. Sometimes y'all can be co- colleagues to take down a common foe uh, of with more power or or diversity, but for the most part, y'all have to agree to disagree. Think of uh, Sherlock and Moriarty in in that that book. Neither one was able to get the edge. Oh, I got to hurry up. So then the next level is the boss level. This is usually where they have their minions, which are pawns, and and they hire henchmen. Um, And so they're able to do stuff to you. They're able to uh, pay somebody to throw the rock where they never have to hide their hands. So be aware. When you get to a boss level, this is when you really got to watch out for what you're dealing with because... They have enough underlings to do their dirty work. Then the next one is the mastermind. This is usually some kind of um, uh, person who uh, loves to keep a lot of plates spinning. And they uh, usually are um, in plain sight, hidden in plain sight, doing you in. And then the last one is when you get into the systemic evil. These are the cabals, the guilds, the shadowy large organizations with a lot of power, resources, and money and secrecy to do you in. So guess what? My time really has been up. I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. This has been Michelle Spiva. Bye. And that's going to do it for today's podcast of Wisdom Smack with Michelle Spiva. If you like this podcast, please help us get the word out. Like, comment, subscribe, and even share. And if you really like it, please help us continue to get the word out by considering using this show's link for Amazon. So when you want to go to Amazon and you do all of your general shopping, uh, please use michellespiva.com forward slash AMZ. It's simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. And this show might receive a little bit of commission that will go towards helping to further get these episodes out to you and to others. So thank you so much for listening. This has been Michelle Spiva with Wisdom Smack. Bye.